Hey YouTube, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Now before you guys freak out, it's in regards to Suicide Squad and more specifically the Joker and Harley Quinn and how Warner Brothers is totally fucked up that entire rigmarole of properly introducing Harley Quinn and properly showing this side of the Joker. Now, it's taken me a while to like properly formulate what it is that I was expecting from Suicide Squad and why I was so disappointed. And it took me listening to other people's opinions and listening to all this other shit and kind of being able to get a feel of what I was lacking. And really, it's of course it's gonna be personal shit and like, you know, a lot of what I wanna see is not mainstream shit, but still something that I feel are subject matters and beats that aren't covered. And because of that, I feel like it'd be innovative. Now, before I delve into this, understand, I am not a DC person. I am a Marvel fan through and through. I don't care about Batman for the most part. He annoys the fuck out of me. I could care less about Superman. I only like Aquaman because Jason Momoa is Aquaman. Like, I don't give a fuck about it. And when The Rock, if The Rock is Shazam, I'll give a fuck about him, but I'll get over it soon enough. Like, so understand, this is not coming from a fanboy perspective. This is coming from somebody who doesn't like spending money on shit they don't like, but because I care and love Harley Quinn and the Joker and their relationship and that dynamic so much, I spent money on this shit. So I feel slight, okay? Now, what I was expecting from Suicide Squad is kind of a mix of Jessica Jones and this amazing comic by the late New Wave comics called Fate of the Blade. Now, there will be a link down below for you to check out that comic. It was an amazing comic, an amazing story. I really loved it. It really hurt me that they canceled it. And then it kind of hurt even more that the story will never be revived because the company doesn't exist anymore. But anyways, I digress. So in Fate of the Blade, right, there's this woman and she's created, she's basically at the end of the day, she is trapped in this marriage and she's held up in kind of like a, this futuristic LA castle and she's at the whims of her abusive piece of shit husband who does illegal shit on the side. And she really is trapped and sheltered and doesn't know anything about the world and she is aware of it. And her whole, like even though she's still enjoying or kind of trying to enjoy the life that she's living, she's aware that it's a shitty life, right? Until one day she comes across this prostitute working her party named Lucy. And this prostitute notices that this girl has a lot of the traits that she had before she freed herself, right? So she takes the girl and exposes her to the world that she's been missing out on or whatever. And the unfortunate thing is, is that because her husband's such a piece of shit, there are guys who are trying to hurt him. And through hurting him, they try to hurt her. And they end up raping and killing her, raping and killing her lover and trying to rape and kill her. But she survives the attack, right? And her husband's a piece of shit about the whole situation. And at the end of the day, she takes power within herself, learns how to defend herself, learns martial arts, and it's a whole fucking vengeance story. And it's so fucking badass and great. Loved it. Now, what does this have to do with Harley Quinn and Suicide Squad? What I wanted to see was a story like that or something along those realms and with the grit and darkness of Jessica Jones, where we're seeing Harley Quinn already in the thick of this relationship with the Joker and kind of aware of the fact that this dude does not give a fuck about her. And even if he was capable of giving a fuck about her, he is so fucked in the head that he cannot treat her in a healthy way. And I wanted to see that addiction that somebody can have over, of somebody else, where Harley Quinn is like, she knows that this motherfucker is toxic as fuck, but she desperately needs to have him in her life. And I wanted to see that struggle and that sludge. And I would have pre preferably wanted to see her pull herself out of it and have Poison Ivy jump in and help her maintain that. 
or less appealing, have Poison Ivy kind of help her out of that situation and then see the tarm oil of being somebody who is finally removed from somebody so toxic, but you want this person so bad that it's, it's a definite battle within yourself to not go back to this asshole. Like I wanted to see that, like the way Jessica Jones displays abuse and victimhood was very intelligent. I wanted that relationship to be displayed in that level of an intelligent manner, right? And, you know, it wouldn't hurt to show Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn fall in love with each other, but you know, like that's not necessary because like, hey, they're technically not together in the majority of the canon where they're involved with each other. It's only like a couple, you know, runs where like they're together, but like, you know, that's just me being gay and that's fine. Like just them being friends would be cool too, but preferably if they were like in love, that'd be cool. And I wanted to see that and I wanted to see like her being separated from the Joker propel her into the Suicide Squad and him being the main villain for the Suicide Squad to defeat so that we could actually see all the work that Jared Leto supposedly put into this character and see the force of nature and also see that the squad has to adjust around this really crazy fucking character who is fucked in the head but methodical nonetheless. Like that's what I wanted to see from Suicide Squad and I didn't get that and it fucking pissed me off. So yeah, that's what I missed. That's what I was expecting. And that's what I hope that I see in the Harley Quinn movie. Like, I really hope I see that. Like, it's, it's painful. Not because I'm a fucking DC head, because I'm not. But it's painful because I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd, right? And I know that Warner Brothers knows how to treat these, like, they know how to do intellectual properties like this. Like, even if the movies stray away from the actual source material, they know how to do it well enough where it's successful and it's smart. So I don't know why the fuck they cannot handle comic book property well. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, but I know they can do better because I've seen them do better. And I want them to do better because, in all honesty, this is the only story arc and these are the only characters from DC that I really give a fuck about, in all honesty, that I would go out of my way to pay and be willing to see more than once. You know what I'm saying? And not, you know, wait for it to come out in DVD and go to my friend's house to watch their copy type shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, fuck, man. Like, I feel like there's so much richness within Harley Quinn and what she's going through and her psyche and all the shit that she has to go through. And they can really delve into that. And yes, it would be dark, it'd be gritty, it'd be heartbreaking. But I don't buy into that whole like, we didn't wanna go through that abusive relationship arc because we didn't want feminists to freak out. I mean like, that's bullshit. Cause again, not to be my Marvel head itself, looking at Jessica Jones, they totally attacked certain subjects in a, like metaphorically in a very nuanced and intelligent way that was so fucking successful and praised. Like, praised, like, there's gonna be people bitching no matter what, but they were, it was praised for the most part by feminists. And, like, I don't see how you can't do that, because that's fucking Netflix. If Netflix can do this, so the fuck can you, Warner Brothers? Just get your head out of your ass. But yeah, that's just, that's just me thinking again. <laughs>